Four riders have qualified for the main event here in THQ World Supercross GP from Arnhem Holland. Taking a look at our 250cc Heat 2, again, four riders will advance. Daryl Hurley, the Cinderella winner last week, he is on a Suzuki, and so is 58 Tyler Evans, 42 Steve Boniface, and 32 Andrew Short. Then it's Joe Aloff and Craig Anderson on four-stroke harness. Yamaha mounted Craig Schnell is number 52. Damon Huffman will be number 20. And then Eric Vallejo, John Sebastian Wall, Perrick Paget, a newcomer to THQ World Supercross. Jay Marmon, keep an eye on him. He is number 81. Ernesto Fonseca, the Team Honda factory rider from Costa Rica. He was our fastest qualifier, or rather practice rider today. But he is going to go to the line 14th because he did not make the main event last week. Then it's Marco Kovalenin, Antoine Mio, Brian Mason, Ted Campbell, and Marcus Mauser. The 30-second board goes up. In 30 seconds, they will light off the line. Cameron, you have to think that Ernesto Fonseca is the favorite, although last time we thought it'd be Langston. Well, for sure, Ernesto has been on fire more than a second faster than anybody else, but the story really is last week's winner, Daryl Hurley, in the final practice, he was the 27th fastest rider. Maybe a little bit of nerves, maybe the pressure, all the media attention, everybody saying, hey, hey, you were going to switch down to the 125s, are you going to ride the 250s the whole time? You can be the world champion. I think it might be, might be getting to him just a little bit, and he's already quite a guy as we see the gate ready to drop. That is number 46, Hurley. Keep it on him, and there goes Fonseca right up the middle, number 24. You can see him get a good start, a little bit to the outside, and right away establishes himself as the leader. Ernesto Fonseca, the teammate of Ricky Carmichael, and our fastest rider in practice. Come down the corner, Fonseca with a big lead. We had a couple riders mix it up and go down. You see him at the back of the pack, but out front, coming down through the whoops, it is Fonseca. We had a chance to go to dinner with Ernesto, and he seemed so calm and collected. You might say, oh, maybe there's more pressure because Ricky's not around to, you know, take that pressure from the team. And everybody says, hey, Ernie, you're going to win, but it doesn't seem to be affecting him one bit right now, right out in front. And you see him, the whoop, so many guys are having a hard time with. He has been blitzing all day. It also looks like his mechanic, Kenny Germain, and Shane Drew of the Honda team did a good job of getting that bike back into shape because it was a mess after the race in Spain. Well, right now, Craig Anderson running second after the first lap, and Daryl Hurley, the guy I talked about, not having great lap times, but great lap times don't always mean a heat win or placing. Daryl proving right now that racing is different than practice. As you see, Craig Anderson and Daryl Hurley, these are two guys that have raced against each other before. Craig from Australia, Daryl from New Zealand, no strangers to each other. In fact, I believe they went first and second in the Australian Supercross Series just a year ago. Well, check it out right now of the top riders, one through four will go to the main event, and if the race ran right now, they are all international riders, no one from the United States. Ernesto Fonseca, the leader, Craig Anderson is second, Daryl Hurley is third, and Perrick Paget holds down fourth. The top American at this point, believe it or not, is Andrew Short, who is in fifth place. Andrew Short was a guy we were talking about that could win in Spain. He could win here also. He had the second fastest lap times in practice, Right now, he's using those lap times to move up. We'll see if he can get up ahead of his two teammates who are actually leading him as we see Ernesto Fonseca with a comfortable lead over Craig Anderson. Anderson, of course, has moved over from the Yamaha of Troy team to the Motorsports Outlet Honda team. He went from a four-stroke Yamaha to a big four-stroke 450 Honda. But Fonseca, your leader, he is still on the CR250, and you can see him get through those whoops in a hurry. Craig Anderson was actually saying that He's sometimes a little timid on the bike. He's still not completely used to it, but he's so surprised at what he can do on the bike. He says, I can do things I never thought I really would want to do, and it makes it comfortable on this bike. Taking a look at our leader, of course, Ernesto Fonseca, one part of the Honda team, the big rider, the big number four, Ricky Carmichael, could not come. He injured himself in testing, so he is sitting out. But how much do you think Carmichael helped Fonseca get ready for this race? Well, I mean, anytime you can ride with arguably the best rider in, in history of motorcycle racing, I'm sure that training together has made a huge difference for Ernesto. You can see the confidence in his riding, and especially in the whoops, so definitely a huge payoff being able to ride with RC all the time. And right now, a Moto World freight train starting in third place. Daryl Hurley, followed by Boniface, and then Short. All three coming into the corner together. Those are Paul Lindsay's boys, three Suzuki RM250s right now. 
Hurley holds the advantage. Then you see Boniface. Then you see Short. And actually, Short has now passed his way into a qualifying spot. That That's a tough one. I would probably have to lean towards Reed because of uh, his performance he put on, you know, the last half of the season last year. And... Uh, he seems really comfortable. He seems like he's got his bike working good, and that has a lot to do with it. So um, I would lean towards him, but if you go towards who rode good in the outdoor and going into a new season, I'd, I'd, I'd say Wyndham because I know his bike is good, and uh, that guy can ride. So, man, I don't know. That's that's a tough one. You know, Reed, Reed can win a bunch. And Villeman, I know, is capable of it. I know Wyndham is. Um, I think that uh, Fonseca could pull off a win this year. Uh, Mike LaRocco has a good chance. Ezra Lust does. Tim Ferry. I mean, those are eight guys right there that are capable of winning, depending on what kind of start the, the better riders get. So uh, it, it could be interesting. I just want to see a, see a good season, you know. Down through the rhythm section, one, two, and three. Actually, as the results go, that is three, four, and five. But only two of those Suzuki's will qualify for the main event if things stand the way they are. There you see Craig Anderson down through the whoops. He's your second place rider. And Short goes by Hurley for third. Andrew at breakfast this morning said, I just want to win this thing. I, just, I think it's time for me to step it up. And his speeds have been showing all day. I think he was a little frustrated with the Friday practice. When we got here Saturday, it was all business. And he has been game on from the word go this morning. Here you see Boniface. He is right now holding down fifth place. That would not get him into the main event. Again, only the top four riders will qualify. Everyone else will have to go to the semi. And here comes Andrew Short on the inside of Anderson. Short moves up. Sticks a wheel, and just like that, Andrew Short goes to number two. And a tech move there by Short because he has been tripling into that corner and maybe going wide. That time he likes to double and then single into the corner and hold the line to hold Anderson out of it. Out front, Fonseca has opened up a lead of three and a half seconds. Your second place rider is now Andrew Short. Craig Anderson, number 30 on the Honda, holds on to third, and then it's... Daryl Hurley, the surprise winner of the opening round of THQ World Supercross GP. Right now, he would qualify directly to the main event, but he's got to hold off that man, number 42, Steve Boniface. And Boniface, you can see him coming off of the whoops, his legs. I asked him about his style, and he calls it the Bonnie style, or actually I did. He rides with his back really straight up and down, and when you see him take his legs off of the whoops, he, he never gets concerned. I asked him about it in practice. He said, oh, just hold on the gas and keep going, but he actually says it with a French accent. <laughs> so right now, the battle is for the fourth and final transfer spot here in the second 250cc semi from the Geller Dome in Arnhem, Holland. You're watching THQ World Supercross GP, and now Boniface is really starting to apply the pressure. About a lap and a half left, Fonseca still in front, but Craig Anderson still leading these guys. Boniface sneaking up. I think these guys may push each other is what it started to look like and get up past Craig. Maybe Craig saw him right there in his rearview mirror and wicked it up just a notch as we see Ernesto continuing to dominate. There you see a triple in the middle of that rhythm section. He's looking awesome tonight. And Fonseca has now doubled the size of the lead since we last mentioned it. He is up to six seconds. Actually, right there, it shows four and a half seconds. Ernesto Fonseca getting through the whoops, keeping his A game on, and it's got to feel good. Right there, almost a little mistake, but it's got to feel good for Ernesto not qualifying last week, and now he's out front setting the fastest laps, looking invincible. What's key about that miscue he had is he didn't just panic and all of a sudden gas it and try to keep going or get the double or and for sure not that little triple. He just rolled it and got back into it and right now the final lap. Over the finish line, Ernesto Fonseca, no nonsense. He takes the win. He will go directly to the main event. Andrew Short will finish second. Craig Anderson is third. And Daryl Hurley is able to hold off his teammate Boniface and go directly to the main event. So the top four transfer directly to the main event, Fonseca, Short, Anderson, and Hurley. But a little further back, some very big names. Steve Boniface didn't make it. Jay Marmot didn't make it. Damon Hoffman did not make it. And Tyler Evans on the podium last week for the first time in Supercross in the 250 class. He will have to go to the semi. Taking a look at our 
Results from the second 250cc heat. Again, it's number 24, Ernesto Fonseca out front. Short is second. The Australian Craig Anderson is third. And New Zealand's Daryl Hurley gets the fourth and final transfer spot. As the gate drop, we talked about getting to the start right away, getting out in front. Ernesto gets the jump and starts to move over. Bike moving around a little bit in the whoops, but he holds it on. Ernesto looked great all moto long. This man was the man on the bubble, the 46. As we see Ernesto taking the checker flag, a solid performance as we get ready to do a little bit of track maintenance here. It's gonna feel good for these guys to finally be in the dry after last week's epic mutter in Seville, Spain. Everyone seemed a little tentative at first, but now everyone is back in the dry. They're back where they're comfortable, and I believe Jamie Little now has our winner, Ernesto Fonseca. Davey, you guys were talking about it. He didn't qualify in Seville, and then tonight he jumps out and takes home heat number two win. That has to be a huge monkey off your back, Ernesto. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's the first uh, race of the year pretty much real race of the year which uh the other one was the mud fest and it it was super tough you were pretty much just trying to survive out there and uh you know well it's part of the deal i guess and uh i didn't make it to the main but uh had a good start my honda was working great and uh you know hopefully i'll get another one of those in the in the main event ernie real quick you're the first rider we've seen tonight quadding that rhythm section tell me about it yeah it's uh it's pretty tough but uh you know just trying to make it as consistent as i can and uh Try to pull away from the second from the second place guys. Andrew was riding really good and uh what can I say? I just want a good start and uh hopefully a strong 20 left. Ernesto definitely has his work cut out for him. He's 25 points down right now. 